through some pain right now. Somebody is struggling right now. You just need to hear from the Lord and understand what God is saying in your life. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your people. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Lord, you speak for me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, search my heart and try my thoughts. Lord, if there be any wicked way in me, lead me now. chapter 2 coming from the New King James. We're going we're gonna to stay in chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 17 and then we're going to go to verse 24 and then go right down to verse 28 after that. Amen? I know there's a lot of instructions. So pray with me. Romans. Amen. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 17. Let's be in prayer for everyone here on today. And also be in prayer for Deacon Donovan and Deaconess Kendra. I'm always praying for those two because they are leaders in the church. God has blessed her and moved her and advanced her and how they, I'm going to just go ahead and say this because you need your flowers while you're here. Come on. Amen. And even though they're not here, they are tithers. Amen. Now, I don't normally say this, but and I'm not pissed off because some of y'all already know in the midst of how we get our monthly reports, from my bookkeeper, I know who tied. Come on, that's right. I know who did. I'm not gonna call you in the office because you not give it to me. Mm. Mm. Okay. You not give it to me. Let me repeat that. You not give it to me. You give it to God. Yeah. And I'm gonna give you your flowers every year before we start talking about stewardship. But it hurts my heart when I know how far we've come. When I know what it took to plant this church. All right. And it just took a faithful few. That's all I ask is that that continue to be the vision of this church. To be a 100% tithing church. I said that from the beginning. All right, Romans chapter 2, verse number 17, it says, Indeed, you are called a Jew, and rest on the law, and make your boast in God, and know his will, and approve the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of things, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man 
Do you not steal? Do you steal? Come on. You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. Romans 28 says in verse 2, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, on, all right. not in the letter, whose praise is not from me, but to your neighbor, from God. From God. From God. You may be seated. If I could for a moment talk to you from the title of this text, Blinded by the Light. Blinded. Blinded by the Light. I think of this in the midst of how we see God and how we see Romans. Romans is one of the hardest letters, the hardest books to preach out of, even when you try to make a series out of it. But in the midst of it, it, it is doctrinal. Come on. And it is purposeful. And ever we have uh, the ability to have Christians who become uh, believers, who become who they are in Christ, must understand by grace that we are saved. I think of it like this in the midst of this chapter here and how we see Paul. And I'm about to get into it before I get my shot, before I get my auto on. But God is letting you know, in the midst of how you see life, think about your conscience. And I think about my conscience and my mind. Remember, we all have brains. The brain you have in your head. But your mind and your conscience, you cannot see. But it is a part of you. In other words, you can't have a body part without something that's going on within that part. And, and so when I see this, I, I look at it in the midst of how we, we see what Paul is saying right here. He's encouraging us to understand, just like a computer, God allows us to see in the midst of how a computer functions, we have to see our mind, our conscience. Our mind and our conscience come. I'm going to break this down because it functions like a computer. In other words, watch this, a computer is programmed. In this day and age, I'm able to say that everyone has some access to a computer. So a computer is programmed to what? Respond to specific, watch this, information. Tell your neighbor I'm being specific. It also responds to information based on the commands it is programmed to follow. I'm going somewhere. So, so, so when you click your word processor, in the midst of that application, what happens? It appears. And, and, and so in other words, your computer becomes just simply a responder. And that's our conscious. In other words, our mind. Our conscience is a responder. Now watch this. And, 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 and what it does, what Paul is actually saying, leads us into the verses above my foundational scriptures. Because in the midst of chapter 2, it shows us in Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, it, it tells us 
that our responses are inputs because it says, watch this, for when the Gentiles who do not have the law, I know this is difficult, but I'm going to break it down. I'm going to help everybody today. <laughs> By nature to do things in the law. These, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Verse 15. Who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in between themselves their thoughts accusing else excusing them. I'm going to fix it up right here. Because I'm giving you right there the text what God is saying. In other words, God has programmed in the midst of when we were birthed out of our mother's wombs, we had moral codes. We, we had something that made us human. Something above, let me say it like this, something above plant life. Come on now. See? And, and so with those actions, when, when a person's actions, watch this, or thoughts, or your conscience, your mind violates that moral code. I'm just talking about just being a human being. Yeah, yeah. I, that's all I'm talking about. See, I told you I'm going to get this when you, when you hear it. In other words, Paul is saying something. He said, look, before we even get to the scriptures, God created you. You had it in your Sunday school. Yeah. He yeah. created people. Come on. You are above plant life. Yes. All right. The thing that makes you any different from anything else, and, and I'm scared to say this word because I don't want anyone to be narcissistic. Come on. All right. All right. And that's a 25 cent word for saying you would know it all. all right. Come on. And I'm trying to say, Paul is trying to break you down to the lowest fraction. Come on. And sometimes we need to be blinded by the light. Well, All right. you in there. Come on now. So here it is. Can I go a further now? Oh, yeah, because I'm still in my introduction. I'm going to preach this because cause God has shown us. Oh, Romans is so good. Yes, sir. When you got the right one talking about it. Talk about it, sir. Because this is all theological. But when you break it down, in other words, our conscious mind. Our mind, I feel like that. Our conscious mind, yeah. which is in your brain, uh -huh. allows us to understand our moral codes. All right. and, and so when we violate them, well. what happens is our conscious response. Mm -hmm. What does it do? Tell your neighbor, no. no. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor, no. No means no. Y'all going there. Because, because even now when we look at the elementary schools and, and going even further in the high schools and now even at the workplace, I'm not trying to get political, but no means no. Oh, let me help you because y'all ain't getting all right. There. See, you got to understand when your conscious mind is telling you the message is no. Well, in other, in other words, let me break it down like this. Your actions be, are because of your thoughts. Well, well, well. Uh -huh. Come on, well. Amen. <laughs> So, so in other words, Paul is basically saying we are actually pre-programmed with the codes of life, the moral code of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be human beings, we're pre-programmed. All right, all right. So in other words, our conscience is actually saying when all things are good, I'm going back to Genesis. 
God says, everything I do well, in my will is good. Come on. So my conscious mind, because I was created, but I'm, I'm talking to believers today, because I was created by God. In other words, my conscious mind, my mind is telling me whatever God is doing in my life is good. So go means go, as, as, as my little girl used to say when she was five years old and I, I, she started kindergarten and she said, Daddy, I learned, I learned what the traffic lights mean. And she would tell me, tell me, baby. And she would say, green means go and red means stop. My daughter, in my feeble mind, I ain't got no brains. It's only because of God. So, so to hear my generation seed say something smart like that, and she apprehended it, that's what Paul is saying. We're like children. And he's allowing us to understand if the actions line up, watch this, with the law of God written in our hearts. This word have I hid against. If it's not in your heart, then you're not going to see it. Right. It's going to stay up here. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's not what Paul is saying. He's showing us it's right here in the text. So it doesn't matter if you Jew or Gentile. In other words, it don't matter what your culture is. Yeah. All right. Paul is saying, if it's not written in your heart. Yeah. In other words, the conscience actually tells you, go ahead, pastor. Mm -hmm. So when I become a Christian, A change begins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. A change starts happening yeah. at the point of salvation. Yeah. In other words, my conscience starts saying, go, mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. go. This is good for me. Go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in other words, it's connecting with my morality. Yeah. All right. It's, it's connecting with everything that started at the natural birth. That's why when when Nicodemus came to Jesus, Jesus left, told him, up, no, 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 look, I'm not talking about going back in your mama's womb. Yeah. I'm talking about you must be born again. Well, come on. In other words, in your conscience, my man. Yeah. You got to give up something. Yes, we do. In your conscious mind, you got to let go. You must be born again. In other words, the spirit of truth. Oh, this is so good. In the midst of your salvation, in the midst of what took place, took a residency. In your heart. So, 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 so watch this. You might not even know it happened. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. But you have to understand it was the living word that was preached to you. Yes, yes, sir. It yes, made sir. your conscious mind turn you around. Well, place your feet. On solid ground. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so. In other words, God immediately, uh -huh. immediately, tell your name, immediately, 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 set you about and reprogrammed you. Yes, sir. In your mind. In other words, where before, watch this. You thought you were doing the right thing. Uh huh. So now you're understanding. God's right and my wrong. That's right. Wax on. Wax on. Wax 
off. Wax off. And, and so God is allowing us to understand in the spirit, he's beginning to what? Renew. Oh man, this is, on, this is this is the basis of Roman. I'm not even in that chapter. He's 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 beginning to renew your mind. Well, well, well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Because he gets there yeah. in Romans chapter 12. And, but we're transformed. I'm just saying it in my own way. So you have identification. Just like God lets you know you are reprogrammed. Yeah. And, and so in the process of time, in the process of life, the spirit uses you to input and watch this. Reprogram on, data <laughs> in your conscience. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, in other words, every opportunity the Holy Spirit gets to come because the Spirit only speaks of Jesus. That's, right. That's, right. That's why the disciples had so many problems. Well, Jesus, who won't be the closest to you when we get to the kingdom? <laughs> it ain't about that. Where is your mind, disciples? Yeah. Where I'm trying to educate you. I'm trying to reprogram you. Yeah. I'm trying to change your opportunity. I'm trying to change your thoughts. I'm trying to let you understand the invitation is not here. Yeah. <laughs> Find it by the light. Yes, the invitation is right here in my heart. This word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. So Paul is breaking it down. In other words, every thought, every deed, every piece of compassion that is good in your heart is because God has sensitized you. That's a 25 cent word. And you probably already figured it out. You have to understand, we become desensitized because of God and his will. And, and, and so, so God is allowing us to understand in the midst of how we see this one particular phrase, just say no. <laughs> just say no. In other words, it was in the midst of how we saw that slogan, it was actually an attempt. Someone who made millions made an attempt that we would not be tempted. In other words, just say no means you don't have to escape from reality. Yeah. Just say no, it means you don't have to feel good. Just say no is means you don't have to experiment with your mind. Yeah. In other words, just say no was dealing with narcotics. Yeah. It was dealing with drugs. Yeah. It was dealing with addictions. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why Paul comes is letting us know you need to be blinded by the light. Yeah. Yeah. Because whatever your addiction is, yeah. God is going to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is that you're addicted to. Yeah. If you're addicted to pain, God is going to fix it. Yeah. If you're addicted to, to wanting to be beat up all the time, yeah. God is going to fix it. Yeah. If you're willing to understand that I, I, I'm so submissive and passive, well, God is going to fix it. Yeah. God wants you to know in the midst of just saying no, you have the ability to yeah. understand that God has made a way for yeah. you. Amen. So God is allowing us to understand in the midst of abuse, yes, sir. in the midst of understanding whatever your abuse is, whether it's, I'm going to say, I'm going to preach this, whether it's from your children, they just talk all kind of craziness to you. That's abuse. Yes, yes, yes. Whether it's from your job, yes. they talk all crazy to you. That's abuse. Yeah. 
because you accept it from your wife. You accept it from your husband. You accept it from your job. You accept it from, from, from people in your life. You accept it. And that's an addiction, y'all. Come on, man. All right. So Paul is saying, as Christians, we must be blinded. Come on. We must be blinded by the light. So the text is allowing us to understand in the midst of how we see, God is showing us, watch this, being good as you can is not enough. Come on. Oh, I know you didn't like it. Well, well, well. In other words, it's not sufficient. Come on. Right. It's not enough to know God. Oh, I want that to be quiet right there. <laughs> because we walk by faith All right. and Ooh. not by sight. All right, now. Yes, Thank you. So it's tough. Because why? Because God has shown us in Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, as I read earlier, he's allowing us to understand that it's because of our faith. Yeah. And, and this chapter deals with judgment. It deals with that. But I'm not here to judge you. It's not my job to judge you. Please hear me. He says in Romans chapter 2, verse 1, therefore, you are what? Inexcusable. Uh -huh. Watch this. Whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. That's right there in the text. For you who judge practice the same things. Come on. I'm giving you the text. So you can't have those moral values and judge people. God wasn't expecting you to do that. That's why he came to make a way out of no way. Because in the midst of how we see the enemy, the devil already knows what God is doing. Why? Because he was the one who was originally in heaven. And I share this with so many people. It's because of the light. Yeah. The marvelous light. Yeah. And I shared this with the first lady all week long. Because we love to talk about the word. Yeah. We love to share the word of God. Yeah. We love to communicate the word of God. Yeah. And God allowed me to understand in the midst of my basic theology 101. Come on now. It was allowing me to understand that had it not been for God in our lives, yeah. we could understand what he's doing in our lives. So it's not for us to judge anyone. Come on. It's not yeah. for us to allow anyone to be in the midst of their lives someone who is to be cast down right. but had it not been for the goodness of God right. in the midst of what God is doing yeah. in our lives yeah. he shows us in the midst of the text that he wants us to be who he said he wants us to be right. so God allows us to show us in the midst of how we see the text. Yeah. He shows up in the midst of Romans chapter 2. And he shows up and he shows out. Because if you look at the end of the text, he says in Romans 2 and 28, yeah. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. Yeah. Nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But it goes on in Romans chapter 2, verse 29. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And beloved, circumcision yeah. is that in the heart. Yeah. And all I'm trying to say, beloved, in the midst of how 
we look at circumcision, God is saying in the midst of whatever needs to be cut off, whatever needs to be peeled back, I'm going somewhere. We have to understand that in the spirit, God is who he says he is. And Paul shows up in the midst of grace and mercy. He shows up in the midst of allowing us to see who God is. And that's why when we look at the uncircumcised lips, according to Exodus chapter 6, verse 12, God wants us to understand as he showed up in the midst of our heart, he showed up because you accept him as your Lord and Savior. God showed up. He showed up to Moses. He showed up on Mount Sinai. And he was blinded by the light. God told Moses, you can all you can't even see my hind paws. So I need you to turn away as I come around the mountain. And that's Allowing us to see right now. He's showing us in the midst of the text. He's allowing us to see that Jesus, 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 in the midst of Moses. We see that Moses was blinded by the light, but Jesus decided to make a way out of no way. He laid it down, but Jesus came into this world that we may have life and life more abundantly. That's why. Sleeping in the darkness, 